What's up guys, Skewer Rampage here. So, we are going to be doing Doomsday versus Kid Boo. And this is an official death battle like the other one. And I'm sure this video won't do as well as the last one did. Because, you know, this isn't as hyped up. And um, this is unexpected, really. But somebody commented this and I, <clears throat> when I asked um, for some matchups. And I thought this was an awesome matchup to do. And basically, if you're new... All I'm doing is I'm reading down all the facts, strengths and weaknesses, putting two characters together and seeing who would win in a death match as screw attack does, but I don't I can't, I can't do the animations guys. So really, I do this and then I have you guys debate down below um, with each other, with me and see who would win. Now, just based off the top, I don't know. Doomsday, I, I like both of them. I love Dragon Ball Z, I love Superman, um, or I love DC, but I think Doomsday would have this over Kid Kid Boo just because Doomsday's raw power. I, I don't I don't know. Let's let's get right into it. Most of you know about Doomsday and Kid Boo, but let's see if let's see if we learn something new. So Doomsday is a rampaging seemingly mindless murdering monster who killed Superman. <clears throat> yeah, so like if he can kill Superman, then it's going to be a tough battle for Kid Boo. He is the result of Kryptonian genetic engineering gone awry, uh, awry, my bad, in the <laughs> Death of Superman comic storyline in which he first appeared. That was actually a really good movie. If you, the new movie, animated movie DC made. They're, they're getting good with their animated movies. <clears throat> um, Doomsday mysteriously bashed his way out of a metallic holding cell miles underground, dug his way up, and began senseless, uh, senselessly killing and destroying everything he saw. His motives were initially unknown, but his nature was obvious. He was incredibly powerful, merciless, and seemingly unstoppable. He easily defeated the Justice League before confronting Superman. Yep, in the movie, he, he took them all on. <clears throat> uh... Sorry, my throat hurts a little, guys, so I got a drink, so. <clears throat> oh, Smallville. It mentions Smallville, and I love that. Um, he was incredibly powerful. Oh, no, we already read that. Doomsday is the only one in main comics continually to ever kill Superman. Continuity. Continuity. I can't, I can't say that word. <laughs> and he did so simply by beating the Man of Steel to death. Yes, he did. Doomsday was killed in the battle as well, but later healed himself and returned to life. Stronger than before, Superman has countered, encountered him on numerous occasions since. And it's true that Doomsday adapts to every uh, way he's been killed before. So like Superman, I know one time he he blew up, uh, well, he fried his brain and through his forehead. He, I think, took him out into space. I don't think he can survive in space. Or can he? If I'm wrong, I swear someone said he can't survive in space. Um, I, I don't really remember that. In the animated universe, Doomsday was a clone made on Earth. He battled Superman, but never successfully killed him. Also, in All-Star Superman, Jimmy Olsen injected himself with Doomsday Serum, temporarily transforming himself into Doomsday to stop Superman. Interesting. I didn't know Jim... See, look, we learned something new. I did not know Jimmy ever did that. In Smallville, which is my favorite show, guys, favorite Superman, any anything Superman, um, we met Doomsday's human form, Davis Bloom, for the first time. He is a Metropolis paramedic who frequently experiences blackouts, during which he transforms into Doomsday. The Doomsday was created by General Zod. And I, I feel like the Doomsday they made in the Smallville show was better than the Doomsday in the Justice League, or Batman v Superman movie. It was kind of crazy. He was a combination of Kryptonian monsters only found on Krypton. Let's see, powers. <clears throat> Doomsday has invulnerability probably greater than that of a normal Kryptonian, as well as super strength, super speed, and incredible leaping ability. Yes, he does. <laughs> He also has numerous sharp bony protrusions uh, which can pierce Kryptonian skin in Superman slash Doomsday, Hunter slash Prey. He uh, was shown to be able to shoot these bones at a target and then reel them back in via some sort of tendon. He also uh, he can also heal great wounds very quickly. Yeah, he has a crazy healing factor. Uh, one of his signature abilities is his regeneration. When he is killed, he comes back to life resistant to whatever killed him. Okay, there we go. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, although Doomsday may be a biological Kryptonian, his powers do not seem to stem from the uh, photonucleic, uh, photonucleic uh, effect that is, they are induced by exposure to the yellow sun. His incredible strength and resilience seems to have been evolved from Doomsday dying so many times and regenerating. Interesting. <clears throat> so he just, he just gets stronger as he dies. Um... Super strength. Doomsday's muscular density is extremely high. Doomsday's physical output and strength astronomically exceeds that of humans and is significantly significantly stronger than Kryptonians. The exact magnitude and exertion that he's able or he's capable of remains 
undefined and unclear. However, he can most likely pick up multiple megatons. Of course he can. Like Superman, he can achieve feats such as super leaping, which comes from his enhanced strength, though he is incapable of flight. I can't imagine if he was able to fly. That'd just be ridiculous. After being bestowed with certain gifts, his strength grew to a crazy, virtually unparalleled degree. Super speed, despite his large size, Doomsday can move, react, and respond at superhuman speeds that cannot be followed, perceived, or detected by the human eye. Eventually, after he was bestowed with certain gifts, his speed grew so high that he could likely transverse around the solar system in seconds. The solar system? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm learning a bunch of things about Doomsday I didn't know. Uh, Kryptonian sense. Doomsday has the ability to sense and locate anyone with Kryptonian genes in his vicinity. No wonder he can locate Superman so easily. In vulnerability, Doomsday, like Superman, possesses a high, very high durability capacity, which can only be uh, penetrated by other strong foes. Certain radiation exposure can harm him. Military weaponry, like bombs, missile grenades, rockets, laser beams, cannot harm Doomsday. Oh yeah, they literally just bounce off of him. <clears throat> We've all seen it. Um, evolving slash metamorphosis. As he ages, he evolves and matures physically. He started as a genetic, as genetic matter, and later evolved into a large spiked creature. You know, I remember that. that what movie was that in that he um, he came out of an egg? Someone, 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 tell me down below if you know what I'm talking about. He came out of an egg on another planet, and then he ended up slaughtering everybody. Uh, regeneration generally, Doomsday can sustain and maintain himself while battling, but he can still take damage and be harmed while fighting against other Kryptonians. Doomsday can recover and heal himself from any physical injury at a rapid pace. This ability is linked and connected with his reactive adaption. Reactive adaption. Doomsday develops and adapts and adapts an immunity to any attack that harms him. The key component of this ability is that he cannot die the same way twice, which is that is an insane just that is something insane to write into him that he he can't die tw the same time twice. So you have to figure out. Luckily, there's tons of ways to kill people, but I don't know about Doomsday. Um, let's see. To a certain point, Doomsday is practically impervious to blunt force trauma of a punch from an opponent like Superman, seeing as he has been killed by Superman with his fists. Wow. I, so that's a way he's been killed as well, just straight brawler. However, Doomsday can be injured by exceptionally powerful blows, though not be killed by normal means. Theoretically, based on the knowledge of Doomsday, he can be harmed to a certain degree by something he died from before, but cannot be killed by it again. This adaption also offers him an extremely powerful powerful healing factor um infinite resurrection doomsday can resurrect himself after death uh though after encountering empiriax he needed to be cloned to be brought back to life it is unknown if he can uh he could have regenerated from the damage dealt by to him by empiriax who's empiriax i didn't i don't know who that is i've never even heard of that someone tell me down below um i'm asking you guys a bunch of questions so <laughs> Immortality, he is practically immortal, and his, in this capacity, Doomsday does not need food, air, or water to survive. Oh, so he doesn't need air, so he can survive in space. His lungs have been enhanced to the point that Doomsday can breathe underwater for long periods of time. Um, power absorption. In the New 52 version of Doomsday, he was granted the power of absorbing... Eh, I'm reading too fast. Of absorbing the energy from objects and absorbing the life force from other living creatures. On, on more powerful beings such as Superman, this process can take as long as four hours to completely drain him of his power. Of course, Superman's very, very powerful. Doomsday is humanoid, um, perhaps even human. He was the subject of a genetic experiment on Krypton, but it was stated by Bertrand. Oh, so was this clone in that egg then? Um, that he was not native of that planet? Of course not. Um, let's see. Deaths. Here we go. Doomsday had died near, uh, numerous times over the course of his existence, each time becoming immune to the previous thing that killed him. Okay, so we already learned. That's what he looked like in um, in the Death of Superman movie. Yeah, right here. Let's see what else we got. What else? Um, Smallville, that's Davis Bloom. Let's see. So I guess uh, that's pretty much it. So we learned some new things about him. Um let's i love the smallville show you if you guys haven't seen it really really you guys should go check it out but uh let's see what else what else oh we're gonna kiss, switch over to kid boo and i don't know after what we just read does kid boo even have a chance all right i'll see you guys in a second okay guys so now here's kid boo and oh here we go here we go um i don't know i don't know how kid boo's gonna compare to doomsday this was definitely an interesting matchup <clears throat> from two really sadistic monsters so okay 
I know a lot about Kid Boot just about because I've seen I've seen pretty much the whole um, Dragon like Kid Boo saga on uh, in Dragon Ball. But let's see, Kid Boo is the original pure form of Majin Boo. Unlike his other forms, the, uh, this form of Boo's thought process is seen to be irrational and spontaneous, even destroying his own body to destroy the Earth. Although he appears to, uh, smaller than any other form, he is more dangerous than any other forms of Boo due to his full, relentless evil and unpredictability. He is also completely free of restraint and has no trace of sanity and, because of this, is extremely volatile. He retains his childish personality, become, becoming amused and laughing hysterically at his own destruction of entire worlds. He is the main antagonist for the Kid Buu saga as well as the final antagonist of the Majin Buu saga. Yes. Oh man, he's he's been one of my favorite villains in my top five for sure. <clears throat> I think Broly is Broly is a, as eh, can't talk as as well. <laughs> um, appearance Kid Buu is most uh, almost identical in terms of appearance to that of Super Buu, um, with the exception of that he is childlike in terms of stature and his antenna uh, also becomes quite short. In the manga, Kid Buu does not have any fingers besides a small index finger. But in the anime and in video games, he has regular four fingers and a thumb. And I love Kid Buu in, um, what was it? I think uh, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 2 and, and 1. I never played 3. Um, personality. Kid Buu personality is very similar to, to that of a very young, spoiled, selfish child, for sure. Um, he is a brat, in a, in a way. In that, he retains no form of compassion or remorse or any of his actions. Furthermore, due to his selfish empathy or... Er, and in capricious, capricious personality and mindset, he is incapable of developing empathy and comprehending the nature of his actions. And it, it can also be said that Kid Buu is very similar to that of a low-functioning sociopath. That's funny. Kid Buu is also like a child, very unpredictable in his behavior and actions, sometimes randomly falling asleep during battle. That was so funny when he just he just went to sleep. Oh, wow. What, wait a minute. He's age 774? May 8th, uh, interesting. I didn't know he was that old. Um, okay, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> or actively or acting like a monkey by banging his chest with his fist, which he did in the uh, in one of the episodes. Boo's only reason for existence was to cause absolute destruction. He enjoyed the destruction he brought to the universe. Uh, Bobbity was the one who made him, right? Um, uh, that uh, wizard, kind of. I don't know. I don't really know what Bobbity is. He appears to enjoy testing the limits of his own power as well as seeking out Vegeta and Goku just to see how far they could push him. He is also utterly merciless, annihilating entire planets simply because Vegeta and Goku were not there. Oh, okay, so that's why he did that. That's interesting. I find a lot of this interesting because um, it's been so long since I've seen the Kid Buu versus Goku fight, so um, it was just amazing when Goku won that. Sorry guys, my voice, it, it really hurts. Um, on the rare occasion he ever showed any restraint of his power, it was to make his game of destruction last longer instead of producing an instant kill. He is not a sadistic killer like seeking to bring pain to his victims, as he seemingly does not care or even know about pain, nor does he seek to conquer and rule over anything. He merely seeks to have, not, uh, have fun the only way he knows how, creating havoc and destruction in the whole universe, similar to the fat version of Boo before Mr. Satan told him to stop killing. That was crazy how much um, Mr. Satan had control over um, uh, Majin Buu, Fat Buu. Let's see. Though Shin says that Bobbidi made him, in truth, Buu actually has ex existed since time Im Im immemorial. He cycled between rampages and long hibernation. Due during numerous uh, iterations of this cycle, he absorbed the el evil elements of mankind, becoming steadily more violent. That makes sense. That's why he, he absorbed so many people that he became so violent. Like, he absorbed all the killers, all just the bad people. Roughly 5 million years before the actual story of Dragon Ball takes place, Majin Buu was summoned by Bobbidi. Um, this monster was a virtually in invincible force of destruction, and because of his absolute wild and ruthless nature, he could not be controlled even by Bobbidi himself. An example of this is when Kid Blue blew up uh, Planet Alpha and its inhabitants and almost hit Bobbidi in the process because Bobbidi tell uh, to tell causing Bobbidi to tell Kid Buu off and only meekly telling him uh, he is his father when Kid Buu intimidated him by glaring at him that's funny <laughs> I didn't think Kid Buu could be controlled at one point um, that's interesting um, these are just like this is just telling you about the show let's see I, I want to find his 
uh, God of Destruction Beer Saga. In this manga, while image training uh, in his family's radish field, Goku pictures Kid Buu as the third opponent he faces after Final Form frees them Perfect Cell. When Goku is ready to attack Kid Buu, he thought his thoughts are interrupted by a shout from Goten, who was distracted by his father and almost fell down a ravine with the tractor. Let's see, Golden Frieza Saga, Dragon Ball GT. Come on, we need to see some of his um power. Here we go. Buu's power changes depending on who he absorbs. According to Goku and Vegeta, his power spikes up when he changes from Super Buu to the huge Buu, uh, but goes back down when he reverts to Kid Buu. You know, actually, that's a good point. What if Buu absorbed Doomsday? He would be unstoppable. Doomsday wouldn't know that he could be absorbed by him. So I'm I'm just curious. What if that what if that happened? Because um, Doomsday would not know. He's just a mindless monster killing everything in his pack uh, path, trying to get the most or uh, trying to be the strongest around. So what if he what if Kid Buu just absorbed him? Like he got I don't know. It'd be really hard for him to be um, be absorbed, but. That'd be interesting. That I think that would take into effect. Um, though Goku and Vegeta underestimate him, underestimate him uh, due to his size. Later, Kib Kibito Kai commented that while on Earth in, in this state, Kid Buu is more dangerous than ever due to his uncontrollable nature. Furthermore, his sheer insanity makes him impossible to bargain or reason with, which, while difficult, was possible uh, to accomplish with Super Buu, Super Buu who um, is at his strongest after absorbing Gohan. While Majin Buu and Super Buu made time for small talk during combat, Kid Buu re relents his assault only to ta taunt his opponents when they are down. His power and dangerous behavior is wit uh, witnessed when he destroys entire plants for no reason and without showing any signs of remorse. Kid Buu's strongest attack, the planet burst. Yep, I knew that. Um, that's an awesome attack. I love throwing that. Kid Buu was, um... Kid Buu was my favorite to use in uh, the Dragon Ball Z Battle of the Gods uh, PlayStation 3 game. Um, and then also Beerus. Earth 10 times over, which makes it so powerful that Goku notes that even he and Vegeta together would not be able to stop it. In the anime, Goku states that as Kid Buu, his speed and power are on a whole no other level compared to any other Buu. Kid Buu displays almost infinite stamina. Shortly after his planet-busting rampage, he battles Super Saiyan 3 Goku, Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta, and the good Buu one after another and manages to outlast them all without showing obvious signs of fatigue. This also applied to his healing abilities as Kid Buu seems to recover at an unlimited rate. That, that See, that's crazy. Actually, I, you know, reading more about him, I feel like he has a better chance at beating Doomsday than Doomsday beating him. They, they're both really, really hard to kill because they have insane healing factors, but Kid Buu is seemingly indestructible unless you have pure energy like Goku destroyed him with. Um, but Doomsday doesn't have a spirit bomb, so um infinite stamina is crazy because he he's uh, he might be faster than doomsday to be honest as seen in his fight kids boo raw power uh boo's raw power is roughly equal to that of super saiyan 3 goku matching him blow for blow though goku claims that he could beat kid boo when fighting in his super saiyan 3 form at 100 percent power he could not maintain his full power due to the form's kai consumption and thus is unable to take down Kid Buu using the form. In that anime, he even states that his attacks have stopped having any effect on Kid Buu towards the end of their battle, and that Kid Buu is stronger than he could have ever imagined. Abilities, here we go. Flight, the ability to fly with the use of, Ka uh, use of Kai. Kai Blast, the most basic form of energy wave. Absorption, Kid Buu fully engulfs, engulfs and takes an opponent into his body to cause an increase in physical and mental powers or prowess. Kid Buu usually has a severed body part, liquefy, or he has a piece of skin fall off his body. The goo will then sneak up behind the person, stretch itself to be large enough to accommodate the target. The goo will then leap onto the person. The goo will try to smother as much of the target as it can on the first strike and to make the capture easier. And then you guys know how that works. Body manipulation. Um, Kid Buu has complete control over the movements and functions of his flesh, uh, flesh muscles, veins, etc., being able to move with remarkable grace, athletic, and acrobatic skill. He can control his flesh and blood to move at command, which allows him to take control over his motions, augment, augment himself. Okay. He has full control over every aspect, uh, aspect of his physical makeup, allowing for immense flexibility and agility and limited shape shifting. Um, mimicry... Boo can gather um, and assimilate any kind of knowledge and understand it fully and, and instantaneously. Interesting. So he can be, he has the potential to be super smart. He's just a child. 
Um, it allows Buddha in um, instantly and perfectively perform any skill or ability he saw. Interesting. So if Doomsday, I don't know, that could be inter that could be interesting. That could play along in the fight. This explains how he knew Kai Kai because he saw Kabuto Kai perform it. Uh, this ability is shared by all versions of Bu. Bu the limity, the limit of his ability is unknown, but he has learned such abilities like the Kamehameha instantaneous movement, which is that's a big factor as well. If he can use that, I love using that with him. Um, if he used that in the battle, that'd be crazy. I'm talking about this battle like it's gonna happen. I'm I'm no animator. Uh, <laughs> um, and a skill used by Vegeta, learned by Innocent Boo. Even in death, his ability is retained by Kid Boo's reincarnate Oob. As Vegeta stated that Oob was learning to fight Goku as he was fighting. Um, regeneration. He can regenerate his body at sub-molecular molecular level, allowing him to survive anything. However, his regeneration plus its endless resilience and stamina granted him immortality. He's shown to be able to survive the blast of a planet exploding. <clears throat> However, it's shown during the fight between Vegito and Super Buu that even the regeneration has its limits after repeatedly being blown to bits, uh, blow to bits and pounded into oblivion, Boo had to exert more and more effort to restore himself. Okay, so they could just go after each other, after each other, after each other, after each other. So uh, that's that's good that they limited it, honestly. Um, Mystic, Mystic Attack, the ability to extend his arms or legs. Um, Kid Buu uses this attack to Vegeta, enlarging his fists, then knock Vegeta to choking him. I remember that um, in the uh, fight between Goku, Vegeta, and Kid Buu. Kamehameha, Majin Kamehameha, Buu's version of Kamehameha, Super Kamehameha, and Warp. Interesting. Combo attack where Kid Buu launches a planet burst at his opponent and then fires a Super Kamehameha at him. So... So does he do that to push the planet burst at them faster or just as a distraction? Mystic Shoot, Kid Buu's signature attack in the Raging Blast series, Electric Shock, Mystic Ball Attack, Finger Beam, Gak Antenna Beam, Mad Kill Spike. Um, what's that word? Buu fires many uh, Kaiways at, at the opponent. Kid Buu has his own unique version during which he splits into hundreds of Kid Buu's that fire continuously energy bullets. Oh, okay, I know that. I know what that is. Planet Burst could take into effect. He has so many moves, guys, like sleep. Um, Kid Buu does need to rest. That just helps him. Paralyzing Gaze. Buu narrows his eyes and stares at his foe, and due to his raw power, the foe is rendered almost completely immobile. Only works on foes um, who are much weaker than he is. So that would not work on Doomsday. Um, but yeah, that's about it. That's just, he has so many moves. Oh my god. Candy Beam. He could potentially turn uh, Doomsday into a candy, uh, like a chocolate bar or something. That'd be interesting. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much, um, it on them both. I don't know. Tell me down below what you guys think on both of them, who you guys think would win. This is definitely interesting. Um, I like this. I'm, I'm glad I got this. Uh, I'm glad I did this. I'm glad somebody, uh, recommended this cause this is crazy. And also down below, um, while you guys are debating, I hope you guys will debate. Like I love when you guys debate, I love commenting with you guys and talking to you guys. So, um, Tell me down below who else I should match up on and read up on because I'm excited. I would love to make this just an ongoing series on my channel. But all right, um, for now, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, look at Brawly. <laughs> That's funny. But all right, see you guys later. Bye.